I said already earlier in the day that there are two new terms uh, in BFO ISO, uh, temporal instant and temporal interval. And now the reason why we have these terms is the following. A temporal region can be zero dimensional, but not be a temporal instant. And an example would be two temporal instants. If you take two temporal instants uh, together, they do not make a temporal instant, but they do make a zero dimensional temporal region. And similarly for temporal interval, a, te a one-dimensional temporal region which has a gap in the middle of it is still one-dimensional but it's not a temporal region it's two temporal regions and so that's why we added those two terms to address the issue of connectedness of temporal regions now we also added two relations uh, first instant of and last instant of this is a way of capturing uh, the, the temporal regions occupied by processes and capturing beginnings and endings of processes. Then there are multiple, or there were multiple relations in BFO 2.0 which had inverses defined in BFO 2.0 but then there were also multiple relations which did not have their inverses defined even though the inverses would be perfectly easy to define. So for instance A part of or a continuant part of B has as inverse B has continuant part A. It's easy to define that inverse we now have defined all the inverses which need to be in the ontology. It's inverse complete in that sense. Um, Alright so we've said that already um, now the question about time again and the case site uh, in the skin issue. How do we capture generic parthood? In other words, relations between one kind of thing and another kind of thing where if you have the first kind of thing, you always have the second kind of thing, but it doesn't need to be the same instance which meets the need for the second kind of thing. We solve this problem, first of all, by recognizing that part of is a two-place relation for occurrence. So there is no time problem when it comes to expressing part of relations between occurrence. My youth is a part of my life. Uh, my, uh, my old age is a part of my life, I hope. Um, and that's true atemporally. It will always have been the case that my youth was a part of my life. Let's suppose that my dog uh, might lose its tail for whatever reason. My dog has part tail at T, but then it gets into a horrible accident and it's lost its tail, and so it's no longer true that my dog has part tail at T1. So for con a continuance, the part of relations we need have to be time indexed. A part of relation between occurrence is always true at all times. A part of relation between continuance is true only at certain times. And so for part of relations between continuance, we need three place relations. A part of B at T. OWL does not allow three place relations. So how do we deal with this problem? And how do we deal with it in such a way that we can have generic parthood in the case as in the case of um, of the case site? example earlier. Well milk teeth is another example. So milk teeth part of human uh, that's only true at a certain time in the life of a human and we want to capture that. To do this Alan invented a procedure for binaryizing three place relations. So in the old version we would say A part of B means every A is an instance level part of some B. In the new version we have two options, two relations. One relation is part of at some time and the other relation is part of at all time. To say that A is part of B at some time means that every A is such that there is some time at which A is an instance level part of some B and similarly for part of at all times. So for occurrence we only need one part of relation which we call a current part of but for continuance we have these two part of relations which are needed to capture certain kinds of 
continuant level part of information. You won't be able to capture all continuant level part of information, but you will be able to capture some continuant part of information in a logically safe way. That's the crucial point. So in the case of a case site, we can say every portion of skin has some portion of case site at some time. We can't say at all times because it could be a different case site. BFO ISO is trivially conformant to ISO 218382 where, because we built it to conform to 218382. That's to the BFO standard. But the standard recognizes multiple ways of having conformant profiles. So already the old versions of BFO, of which there were three, BFO1, BFO1.1, and BFO2, will still be conformant profiles. And we give the rules for testing conformance in the standard. BFO OBO, which includes this characterized uh, term, or will include it very soon, will also be conformant to BFO ISO. And the rule basically is that you have to be derivable from the common logic formalization. Moreover, there may be different OWL representations of, for instance, BFO OBO. So it could be that because OWL is weakly expressive, you can't say everything you need using this version of OWL. You can't, but you could say some things you need using this other OWL version of BFO OBO. And so you create two OWL versions of BFO OBO, which overlap only in part. Both of them could be conformant to BFO ISO because the uh, compatibility with the common logic version gives you a much greater realm of possible expressivity. One way in which we can see how using continuant part of without the all times or sometimes can be illustrated by showing that there are cases where transitivity fails for continuant part of. So th this is a, a, a real example. The 11th who's ours uh, which has a nickname Prince Albert's own, was a continuant part of the King's Royal Hussars. The King's Royal Hussars were a continuant part of the 12th Armoured Infantry Brigade, but at a different time. And it turns out that the 11th Hussars are not a continuant part of the 12th Armoured Infantry Brigade, and this is an example of transitivity failure. Um, and we don't want transitivity failure for continuing part of it. It looks like an obvious transitive relation. Uh, now, this, however, is an, a counterexample to transitivity at the level of instances. So one instance is part of another instance. The other instance is part of a third instance. But the first instance is not part of a third instance. It's still embarrassing. It suggests that the British Army was not well organized. Uh, whole brigades were losing infantry. But uh, can we find examples in the realm of the general and biological uh, truth rather than just accidents of history? Well, oh, this is one example. The, the case site example was a made up example. This is a real example. Phagosome is a continuant part of macrophage. A macrophage is a continuant part of bone marrow, but it's not the case that the phagosome is a continuant part of bone mag marrow because macrophages can migrate. So that's an example where we would indeed have a, bio a real biological logical problem if we assumed that continuant part of is transitive. Continuant part of at all times is transitive, which is reassuring. And when people use continuant part of, they usually think that they mean continuant part of at all times but they don't bother to check. And this will make it necessary to check whether you really are dealing with a continuant part of at all times relation. Uh, now we have four kinds of conformity. Uh, so we have the BFO ISO standard. If you have a, an OWL formalization, it might be one of the two OWL formalizations already documented in the standard and then you have direct conformity. It might have direct conformity both to the OWL and to the common logic formalization. It might have direct conformity only to the OWL formalization, might have direct conformity only to the common logic formalization, or it might have a conformant profile. And 
A conformant profile is defined here, and I don't think I'll go through the details. It, it might be one of Robert's null cases where you just have the, uh, the labels and nothing else. You don't have any axioms at all. That's still a conformant profile because you're using the labels, and that could be of some help for somebody. Uh, you may only use some labels and not use others. You may have a Greek labels or German labels or Chinese labels. I, some people do speak Chinese, I understand. Um, or you may use entirely new labels, but you keep all the axioms, and that would still be a conformant profile, provided there was a corresponding mapping from your labels to the labels of BFO in the standard. And now, um, here are some uses uh, of the CL formalization of BFO to, uh, ISO. It can serve as authoritative, not merely for BFO, but also for authority, an authoritative relation ontology. It's more intuitive, more friendly to non-experts than OWL. It's logically stronger than OWL. Therefore, we can prove the OWL axioms from the common logic axioms. And it can serve for more expressive definitions in, uh, in domain ontologies like the uh, pro-site ontology, for instance, which needs the more expressivity than ours.